Today on Dimitri's Garage, we'll be taking a look at the King of Gloss from Soft 99. The Soft 99 guys were kind enough to send me these samples, and what's so cool about their company is they tend to have a lot of out of left field products. It's covered in cool graphics and logos. It is also separated out by paint color, which isn't something you see that much of in 2022. It says it'll be glossy, it'll help keep the surface clean, and it'll last for three months. We will be applying the black version on this side of the hood and the white version on this side of the hood. So we'll start with the white version. And when you pop these open, you wanna be really careful. The sponge likes to fly right out of there. This is not to inhale or drink it and to wash your hands after use. Now we're gonna pop this bad boy open. And interesting, it is not a hard paste like I imagined it. So we'll take the product, spread this around a bit, and now just buff in. And maybe I used a little too much. It is a very soft product. We'll give it five to 10 minutes. And now let's do the black edition. All right, we're gonna pop this thing open. And we could see that in this case, we've got a hard paste. It looks very different than the other product. A little bit of a swirl. And the instructions and the warnings and everything are the same. We're just putting this stuff on, waiting about five, 10 minutes. And again, this one's spreading very well with buffing motions. It looks a little different than the other side. It's kind of interesting. This side is pretty much completely cured. It's looking ashy. Oh yeah, that's coming off very easily. For a paste product, this is very easy removal. I would say this feels easier than removing the Soft 99 Fuso coat. And this side's looking really ready too. Definitely a little harder to remove. Again, I did use quite a bit of it, and it's not bad though. I'd say this reminds me of the old Fuso coat. Personally, I thought that the white edition was the easiest to use, and I would give it 10 points. And in this case, it means it is as easy as I would expect a paste product to be. And over here for the black edition, I'd say it was just a smidge harder. It was a little tackier. I actually think I used a thinner coat of the product than I did over here, and that came up easier. Now, overall, I still think this is very manageable. I think it is an easy to use product, so I will give it five points. This is my gloss testing station where I use this gloss meter to determine the amount of shine in gloss units that these products create. Now, this is just the amount of reflected light. So in this test, I've already applied our two products, the black one to this side, the white one to this other side, and we're gonna be taking five measurements and averaging them out to determine how much gloss we've gained or lost from this 94 gloss panel. With our meter turned on, we wanna make sure it's calibrated. We want it at 20 degrees and 104 gloss units. So let's get five measurements. Now, paste waxes tend to not do quite as well as some of the liquids and especially sprays and ceramic coatings. So here we've got 88.5 and it looks like 89.8 over there. Got 90.2 in the middle, got 90.6 in that corner, 89.9 over there. 449 in total, we'll divide that by five for an average of 89.8 gloss units. Now we had 94 to start with, so that means we've lost 4.2 gloss units and the black version of the King of Gloss from Soft 99 will score a negative 4.2 points as a result. Now, again, keep in mind, this is just reflected light, not prettiness or other optical qualities. Now it's time to look at the side treated with the white version of the King of Gloss. And let's take five readings. Looks like we got 89.1 over here, 87 up there. Let's call it 90 over here. We've got 89.9 in the corner and 90 in this corner. So 446 divided by five, and we've got 89.2. We're gonna subtract 94 again. And it looks like this one has lost 4.8 gloss units for a score of negative 4.8. It's time to do the UVA test. And this is our second generation test that uses this transmission meter, and it'll determine if the product on these microscopy slides has a UVA blocking capacity. If you're curious about how this device and this test works, I will leave a link in your top corner. It's a dedicated video on this generation two process. And for now, let's get started. And we've got 100 visible light passing through, zero UVA being blocked, and zero infrared being blocked. We have a slide that's been coated in clear coat. Hopefully you can kind of see the effect the clear coat's made. And we're gonna put this into the device 
and we're gonna see how much UV protection that's given us in the UVA spectrum. And it looks like 92.9% .9 of visible light is passing through and 88.9% of UVA is being reflected. We have a blank microscopy slide. It's got nothing applied to it. Let's see what kind of blocking it does on its own. So taking a look, we've got 92.8% of visible light passing through. It's within a 10th, it's within the accuracy range of the device and 8.5% of UVA is being blocked by the glass. And here is a King of Gloss Black Edition slide. We're gonna pop it in and see if it does any different uh, than our blank slide. And it doesn't look like it is. We're looking at 8.3, 8.4 blocked UVA, 92.8% of visible light passing through, no difference. And then let's take our White Edition slide and pop that guy in and see what difference that makes. And it looks like, you know, it's really about the same, 8.8, 92.6, slide could just be a little thicker, a little dirtier. So ultimately neither the white or the black edition are gonna score any points. It's all within the error rate. Quick reminder, I do have Amazon affiliate links down below in the description. They are to the products we're testing in this video as well as some of the tools. If you click through and purchase anything at all on Amazon, I will receive a small commission at no added cost to you and that does help me run this channel. And of course, if you've enjoyed the content, please do leave me a thumbs up, leave me a nice comment, and of course, subscribe. It is the next day now and our panel is cured with the white product on this side and the black product on the other side. We will now determine the slickness of both products by comparing their static coefficient of friction to the untreated stripe. Now the stripe we know is 0.38, that is the static coefficient of friction of our hood with nothing on it. With the product on, hopefully we will see that number fall. And for that delta, we will assign points. I will leave a video right up in your top corner, and that video focuses entirely on this test. We're gonna park the block in our usual testing area, and we will take five readings to average them out. So we've got 120 grams right there. That's our first reading. Let's take another one. We got 80 grams. And the third reading, we got 90 grams. And let's do our fourth. Got 90 grams again. And let's get our final reading, 80 grams. So we've got 460 grams here, and we're gonna divide that by five, and that's gonna give us 92. That's the average gram force needed to break this block free. And we're gonna divide that by 1,040, the weight of our block, and we're gonna determine that our static coefficient of friction is 0 0.09 rounded up. So if we take 0.38 minus 0 0.09, of course we get 0.29, that is our delta. Now we give a 30 point multiple to get our score, and that means this product will score 8.7 points. Now we're at the side that's been treated with the black paint version of the Soft 99 product. Let's grab five readings. We've got 100 grams. We've got 110 grams. Let's do the third one. We've got 120 grams. Got 100 grams. Now let's get the final reading, 80 grams. So looks like we've got 510 grams in total. Let's divide that by five for average. 102 grams, fo grams of force on average to move it. So that means rounded up, we've got 0 0.10. Now obviously that means from 0.38 we get 0.28 and we're gonna multiply that by our point factor of 30 and 8.4, so very close. It's time to look at visual appeal. And what I can tell you is that both the white and black version of the King of Gloss seem to perform pretty similarly on my red panel. You know, I don't have a specific test panel that I've used for other products in black or in white. You know, obviously there may be a difference in the optical quality if you are using a white or black car. When I'm looking at my monitor, I do see the stripe where the product has change the visual appeal. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, YouTube has an 8-bit color limitation, and it does make it a little harder to see this versus like what I'm looking in my video editing software. And I'm looking now at the black edition side, so it's on the right here, and I just see that very clean line. I think you guys will be able to see it on YouTube. I really hope you will. But it is a nice clean line, and it's made a significant visual improvement to the panel. Like the black version really does look pretty good on red. I would say in our testing, this would be a five. A five is a product that has made a significant improvement, but it doesn't look, you know, fantastic. Moving over to the white edition side, and I do see the line. It is, it's kind of hard to match my finger to my viewfinder, but it is right there. 
And I will say it has made a difference, but it is pretty marginal. It's not marginal enough to call it a zero. I'll still give it a five, but between the two on the red paint, it is definitely better to go with the black version if your car is red. We have now moved outside and we're gonna be doing the durability testing. This is where we're gonna see how many washes it takes to break down either product on the left or the right side. A point will be awarded for every completed wash and we will stop washing once a product looks like it has worn off. Before we start washing, let's see just how hydrophobic both these products are. That's not bad at all. I think that was massively hydrophobic. I would say the white side is definitely a little weaker on the beading. Next, we're gonna be using our Atom Shampoo. This is the basic blue one. It's diluted the same way we've done it every time. We've got the same settings dialed in, so let's start our washes. Let's rinse off after our first wash. Now let's take a look and see if the performance has changed at all. Let's look at the black side. And let's look at the white side. Still doing great. And keep in mind, this was sold as a three month product. Let's rinse number eight. Let's look at the black side first. And now the white side. The performance is still awesome. All right, we are on the 20th one. Let's rinse it off. All right, let's check them out. The black side. And the white side. Awesome performance, 20 and that's really great. You know, I was expecting this to be one of those products that really didn't last very long, and this is surprising me. I might be here for a while. All right, 50 washes, let's do it. Let's look at the black side. And now the white side. Man, really great performance. We are 100 and let's wash it off. Let's look at the black side. And now the white side. Whew, 200, getting tired. Let's take a look at the black side. And let's look at the white side. Honestly, now the white is outpacing the black side. That's really weird. 300 in, let's take a look at the black edition. Now let's look at the white edition. Man, that's holding in, that's crazy. All right guys, we're at 425, let's take a look at the black edition side. I think 425 is fair to call it. That's a ton of washes for a paste wax. Let's take a look at the white side now. Yeah, I mean, you can tell that's still pretty much working. So let's keep going with that. All right, let's take a look at the white edition side. The performance seems roughly on par with the black edition now. Let's talk about the positives of both products. I thought they were both very slick with the white edition slightly edging out the black edition on slickness. And then I also thought that they all, they both looked okay. Um, I wouldn't say either of them was stunning, but the black edition I think looked better. So if you're going to use it on a red paint, I think that's a great way to go. I think the slickness was a marginal difference. They could, you know, both be almost as slick. It's insane how durable both these are for a paste wax that's so easy to use. You know, normally you're expecting a coating 
to get you this many washes. Now, as extreme as that durability is, you should still keep in mind that they say this is a three month protective product and it's possible that other factors will degrade it and reduce the actual longevity versus the durability. Perhaps the product doesn't survive heat or cold or humidity or some other factor. It is a really insane durability on par with some of the best coatings. So that's just really crazy. It didn't really do anything on our UVA test. Uh, obviously that's pretty much on par with everything else. Nothing really does anything on our UVA test. And then the product also, I think had a little bit of a negative effect that I don't really score, which is that it seemed to attract dust a little bit. I kind of noticed that I kept having to wipe it off. So really overall guys, this is a super interesting product. If you've enjoyed this content, I will have more detailing videos up soon. And I'd love it if you left me a nice comment, left me a thumbs up, and of course subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you again really soon.